Hello and welcome to the next Motion Builder tutorial. In today's video we're going to look at the most important part of the Motion Builder pipeline, how to characterize your character in Motion Builder. So I'm going to break this process down into four simple steps. Number one is T-posing. This is the most important part of the process where you have to align all the joints of the character's limbs. Second one is character mapping. This describes your character to Motion Builder so it can understand which limbs are which. Third step is a characterization. This is an easy bit. It's a tick box and how to create a character naming template that lets you skip step two whenever you've got characters that share the same joint names. So to get started, we're going to come up and file, open our character. This brings up our open options dialog window. In here we're just going to right click and load all elements. We don't want any animation in the scene when we're characterizing our character, so we're going to right click, discard all animation. Can right click and load all settings. This file was actually saved without any animation in it, so there are no takes showing up. If there were, you just want to make sure they're unticked. And then we can deselect all the options down here. And click open. Once our character is open, we can control W into the schematic view and hit A to frame all. We're just going to select the top joint in the character, which is usually the hips, and control W back into the perspective view. We can hit T for translate and then F6 to go into global mode and we're just going to set the X and the Z to 0 to make sure she's centered in the scene. We can hit R and we're just going to make sure that she's aligned, she wants to be facing down positive Z. So if you look down here in the corner of the screen you can see the X, Y, Z axes. So positive Z is actually screen right as we're looking at her. Uh, the other way to check this is to control F into the front view your character should be looking straight at you. If they're not, you can come down here and then left click, drag left and right or type in values to make sure they're aligned down the correct axes. So now we've got our character correctly aligned in the scene, we can start putting in a T-pose. Now I used Adobe Fuse to generate this character mesh which actually builds a character in this T-pose. So I actually rigged her in the same T-pose but these days it's more common for characters to be built and rigged with their arms down by this side in this kind of A pose. This just helps with skinning and deformation around the shoulders. So for this tutorial I'm going to pretend that she was actually built and rigged in this position so you can see the whole process you need to go through to align her into a T pose. And because all the joints in the character are all FK you need to start T posing your character at the top of a joint chain and then work your way down. So for the arms we're going to start with the clavicle. So if you zoom in, if you look at the clavicle, these are actually usually built and rigged in the correct pose. So what you're looking for is this sort of neutral pose. So when you rotate the arms down by the side, you get this nice sort of natural pose for the shoulders. What you don't want is something where the character looks like they're shrugging or like their shoulders are uh, drooping. Like I say, this is in the correct position to start with. So what we can do now is Control A to show the skeleton, then I'm just going to use Alt and Down on the keyboard to step down the hierarchy. To start positioning the arms, what I usually do is align them in global space. So if we switch to F6, and then down here we can type in our values to align the joints. And then again we can use our alt down to go down to the elbow. Set this value and alt down again. And zero out the wrist. Now I know all the joints are aligned with the world axes. The problem now is if you look at the top view, because the characters are usually rigged with a slight bend in their arms like this, when you actually go back and zero them out you get this sort of weird bulge which we don't really want. So what we need to do is just rotate this arm backwards slightly. So we'll put this back by three degrees and we can alt down to come to the elbow. This you want to change to the opposite so that would be minus three. So what that does is, if you look at this in a line now, using the bottom of the screen, it's a handy ruler. You can see these joints are still in alignment. So that's why I use the minus three plus three value on here. Whatever I rotate this back by, I rotate this hand forward so that the shoulder and the wrist are always in line. And if we just 
Control A to hide the joints. You can see now the arm's actually looking a lot straighter. We don't have that weird bend. So now we know our arm's nice and straight, and we can come down and check the hand. So what we're looking for here is that the palm's nice and square and aligned with the world. If we look at the knuckles in relation to this grid line on the floor, you can see they're pretty straight. So it's good from the top view. But if we look in the front view, you can see the hands tilted down like this. What you actually want is the palm flat with the floor. So we can step down the hierarchy again using the down arrow, alt down. And then we can just come in here and left click, drag to raise this up. Let's say 10 degrees. So now we've got our arm nice and straight, the palms flat to the floor. We can start aligning the fingers. So if you go into a top view, control A to show all the joints. We can select all these finger joints. Be careful not to select any of the others. And then we can just align these globally. So nice and easy. If we look in the front view now, you can see our fingers are nice and straight. The way I usually align the thumb is starting with the base of the thumb. I'll rotate this inwards until the joint of the thumb is in line with the palm of the hand. So what I'm looking for is a sort of tucked under shape from the thumb. And then we'll go in the front view. And we can rotate this up in Z. Just so that it's aligned with the hand. Get that nice and straight. And then again we can use the Alt down to step down the hierarchy. And we can set these to the correct values to make sure this is straight with the world. What you can be looking for in the thumb as well is that the thumbnail is actually facing towards you in the front view. So there we have our left arm nice and straight. And we can repeat this on the opposite side. Easiest way to do this is just look at the values on here and then copy them across but invert them. So we can set this to minus 90, set this to 0, set this to 0, and then we know this is rotated backwards by 3. So on this side we want to change this to minus 3 because I've actually mirrored the behavior of the joints. So then this one's going to be positive 3. If you look at the value on the wrist, we need to bring the wrist up by minus 10. And we can control A into x-ray mode, select all the joints again, and just zero these out. And then to align the thumb, we can do exactly the same as we have with the hands. And we can copy the values from this side. Put them in this side. Again, making sure we use the inverse value. So if it's a negative value, we just take the minus off. And if it's a positive value, we add the zero, we add the minus on. So we can set that to zero, and then alt down. Align the second joint of our thumb. Hold down again just to make sure the bottom part of the thumb's straight. So we have our character with our arms nicely T posed. Next thing I'm going to do is the legs. So we're going to control A to bring up the skeleton. Before we start moving our legs, what we want to do is store the positions of our feet. So the easiest way to do that is to come down into elements, left click, grab a null, and then drag it in onto the foot. Then we can alt left click drag onto the foot again and then use align rotation. So that's going to align the rotation of these nulls which we can use later to realign the rotation of the feet if we actually move the legs. We can just realign the feet with the nulls and get the foot back on the floor again. So for the legs we're going to control R into a right view. What you want to be looking for here is that there's a nice line 
where the character is standing on balance and there should be a slight bend backwards in the legs. So what we can do is grab a plane, bring that in, we're going to rotate it by 90, so we get a nice straight line. Center that in the seam. So that's a line to her hips. So what you want to be looking for, there should be a line roughly from where her ear is going to be, which is somewhere around where the neck finishes here, down through the hips, behind the kneecap, and then back through the center of the foot, roughly where it is now. So you want to bring this foot forward slightly. So if we come into the perspective view, you can just grab the both legs, go back into the right view. I'm going to rotate these forwards slightly. And we're going to use Alt down to select both lower legs. So we can rotate our legs back slightly. Roughly to where they were before. We can look at what check with the plane again. And they've got a better alignment between the ear through the hips, behind the kneecap, and then through the middle of the foot. So we can go into the front view. We can delete our plane, we don't need that anymore. We just want to make sure these legs are straight down and that the feet are underneath the hips. Because sometimes characters' legs are built sort of slightly further apart if they've been scanned, especially they'll leave more space between the feet. If that was the case, put in our values over here to align them to the world. So now when our legs are straight, we can control E back into perspective view and then realign our feet using the nulls that we put in earlier. We're just going to Alt left click drag onto each of the nulls and use a line rotation and same thing with the other foot the reason I'm dragging down here because it's just easier to hit these nulls down here than it is in the actual scene we can do a line rotation and we can delete out our two nulls that's our legs nice and straight so we can switch back into the right view we just want to check to make sure the character's standing upright and that they're looking straight ahead. Most of the time, again, the characters are usually built in this sort of upright position and facing straight ahead. So now we've got our character aligned correctly in the T-pose, we can move on to the next step, which is a character mapping. So for this, we're going to come down to Characters and drag a character into the scene. If you've used Motion Builder's naming convention or you're using a 3D Max biped, you can just control a into x-ray mode select to join and then you can come up here to load skeleton definitions and then in here you can select the right template so HIK is motion builder naming convention and biped is the 3d max biped naming convention so if you've used a standard biped it should have all the correct namings so you can select your template and you can come into match all bones with prefix and if you've got a namespace for your character you can just use that or you can select all the joints that you want to actually use. If we had the correct names, we could use the prefix and then hit OK. The Motion Builder would actually complete the character naming template for you. But for this tutorial, I've used my own custom joint name so I can show you how you'd complete it if you weren't using the Human IK or Biped naming conventions. So to get started, we're going to select the hips and come up here and right click and assign selected. And then we can come back into the view and press down. And use right click and assign selected. Go into our spine, move down, assign selected. And then we can just step through each part of the hierarchy and add it in to the character mapping as we go. Then we can come up to our neck joints. The reason I like using the Alt and stepping through the hierarchy is it's much easier to select the joints using this method than it is trying to grab them in the scene. And before we start doing the arms and the legs, we just need to make sure this mirror matching tool's on. So what this will do is, when you fill in one side, it'll actually use the joint naming to try and find the opposite bone on the other side. So you can see it more clearly in the arms. So if I select the shoulder and right click and assign, you can see it automatically fills in the right hand side. What it's actually using here is the joint names. So if you've got left or L token in the joint names, it'll look for right or R in the other side. And if it finds one, it'll add it in. 
This is really handy when you come to doing fingers. The other reason I like to step through the hierarchy with the alt down method is because there's a weird bug in here where if you double click on a joint and then select it in the viewer you can see this window flips across and if you don't notice that it's flipped when you then go and put in the second joint you're selecting the left joint left thumb joint and then you'll be assigning it to the right thumb joint so this is why I prefer to use the step through the hierarchy method because then when you assign a bell it doesn't jump to the opposite hand We can just go through and do the rest of the joints in the same way. You want to make sure that you've got end joints to your fingers as well. Motion Builder will actually use these to align the IK for the end of the fingers. So if you don't have those, it won't put the IK at the end of the fingers, which will make doing fingertip contact quite difficult. A really good tip is if you're unsure how many joints you've got in your finger, how they line up, you can actually start with the joint. It will give you a red value at first and then use Alt up and step back down the hierarchy to make sure you get that in joint. So sometimes if I can't always tell, if I'm not sure how many joints I've got in the fingers, I'll start at the end and then work my way back down. So just do the last of the finger joints. We can come out of there. I'm going to do the legs. And step down. And step down again. And just put in the toe base. That's nearly everything. We just have to go back in and put in the roll joints. So I've got an upper roll joint and a forearm roll joint. And then I just have the upper leg. roll joint. I don't have any roll joints in the lower leg. And then the last one is a reference, which I think I've called reference, so it picked it up when I showed you earlier how to use the load skeleton definition template. But if it wasn't, I could just control W back into our schematic view and select reference from there and assign that. So that should be our character mapping complete. To check that, we can just come down here into characters. If we double click our character you can go to the character definition pane. So this will show you where all the joints have been mapped to so you can see our reference. So you got the base. These are minimum joints that Motion Builder requires to actually be able to characterize and use the control rig. Now in our character mapping is complete. We just give one last check just to make sure everything's okay. So we've got our character standing up nice and straight. Feet are flat on the floor. Arms out in a T pose, looking straight ahead. So it's a line down positive Z. So she's looking straight at us in the front view. So now we can characterize our character. So you can either tick this characterize setting down here, or you can come up here and hit lock. We've already checked that our character is in the correct stance, so it's facing down positive Z. So you can hit biped. Now we have our character characterize ready to start using. A couple of final things we're just going to do, and that's align these foot floor contacts. As a rule, I don't usually use these, but it is only to have them set up in your scene. So you're just positioning these under the toes, and then one under the ball of the foot, and then the last one under the heel. And the final thing we're going to do, just so we don't have to do that whole characterization process again, if we've got another character that's using the same skeleton joint naming convention, we're going to save out the character mapping. We're going to select a joint in our character, come up to definitions, then in here we're going to click save skeleton definitions. This brings up our save skeleton definition window, so we're going to give it a name. So I'm going to use Jess because that's a character, 
But if you've got, say, it was a crowd agent or a NPC non-player character or something like that, and they all use the same skeleton, you could put the name of the skeleton in there rather than a, each individual character. It gives you an example bone name, so it's Jess reference. Prefix, we've got a namespace on this, so that's Jess, and then you can specify where the path is. So it defaults to the path where all the other files are saved. So we're going to keep ours in there as well. And click OK. So what this allows us to do now is if we have another character with exactly the same joint naming conventions, rather than having to manually fill in the character mapping again, we can do it all automatically using templates. So if I turn off this characterization and just delete our character, we can come in here, drag a brand new character in. We know she's already in T pose. So we can select a joint and then come up here and load our template. Match all bones with the prefix Jess for the namespace and click OK. And that automatically fills in all our joint mapping. And then we can just characterize biped. And just before we save our character, we come back down here. And we're going to rename our character to our character name. And then we're also going to add it to the same namespace. So we can right click, add remove namespace, select Jess, apply to branch, and click OK. All that remains now is just to file save as. And we can change from the motion builder setup to characterized. And then save that. And then in this file, we're going to save all elements. We're not going to save any animation. I just like to keep the file nice and clean. So if I open it up, I know there's no animation on it. So I can, if I need to change the characterization or apply any constraints or things like that, I know there's no animation in that are going to affect any of those things. We're going to save all settings. And we're going to turn off take so it doesn't save any animation in the file. Then hit save. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this video useful and it's given you a couple of new ideas to try. If it did, then let me know in the comment section below and give that like button a quick click. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video.